Hello everyone, welcome to IIT Jab and Chemistry tutorial number 34 and this is lecture number 12 of the physical chemistry chapter liquid state. Our today's subtopic is effect of concentration of solutes on viscosity. In this context, we are also going to learn the terminologies such as relative viscosity, specific viscosity, reduced viscosity, inherent viscosity and intrinsic viscosity. Now, if you take a pure solvent and add up some solute to make a solution, then both of them would have some different viscosity coefficients. Suppose the viscosity coefficient of the pure solvent is eta 0 and viscosity coefficient of the solution is eta so that the concentration of the solution is C gram per deciliter. That means C gram of the solute dissolved in 100 milliliter of the solution. In that case, do you remember the last slide of the 10th lecture of liquid state? This one was the last slide of 10th lecture of liquid state where I had given you a slight idea about the term relative viscosity. It was the ratio of the viscosity coefficients of two liquids. This one was the experimental liquid, this one was the reference liquid. So similarly, if this is the aqueous solution and this is water, then eta over eta zero should be known as relative viscosity. So let's continue the ratio eta over eta zero which is known as relative viscosity, this is dimensionless because this is the ratio of two viscosity coefficient terms. If you deduct one from here because this ratio is greater than one and the fractional difference is known as specific viscosity. So specific viscosity has the mathematical expression eta over eta zero minus one that is eta minus eta zero over eta zero. This one is also dimensionless. Now if you divide this eta specific with concentration then you will get yet another terminology which is known as the reduced viscosity denoted as eta reduced which has a mathematical expression eta specific over c and since there is one over c so it should have the dimension of reciprocal of concentration and therefore it has the unit deciliter per gram now if you take natural log of relative viscosity and divide this by concentration term then you will get inherent viscosity denoted as eta inh and it has the mathematical expression natural log of relative viscosity over c and it also has the same unit deciliter per gram now the final term intrinsic viscosity if you graphically plot inherent viscosity against concentration or reduced viscosity against concentration then both these plots would merge at a common point in the y-axis and that point is nothing but the viscosity reduced viscosity or inherent viscosity at infinite dilution or at zero concentration and this is known as intrinsic viscosity it is denoted as eta within third bracket and this is the value of reduced viscosity or inherent viscosity at infinite dilution or at c tends to zero so this one will also have the, the unit deciliter per gram so what about the graphical presentation if you plot reduced viscosity or inherent viscosity that is this one eta specific by c this is reduced viscosity or natural log of eta relative by c that is inherent viscosity then reduced viscosity would give a straight line with positive slope whereas inherent viscosity would give a straight line with negative slope but on extrapolating both these lines they would merge at a common point in the y-axis which is known as the intrinsic viscosity so plot of reduced viscosity against concentration or plot of inherent viscosity against concentration both would give the value of intrinsic viscosity what about the physical significance of intrinsic viscosity it can be well understood by the mark howing situation in case of polymer solutions the molar mass of polymer units is a function of intrinsic viscosity and it is related by means of this mark howing equation what is the mark howing equation this is show this is shown being shown here in the equation number 16 and that equation is intrinsic viscosity is equal to some constant into molar mass to the power yet another constant this molar mass is actually the function of degree of polymerization why this is the function of degree of polymer because the number of monomer units added up adds up to make the polymer unit so as much as the monomer unit adding up the molar, molar mass of polymer molecule would increase so this molar mass is a very important factor and this molar mass is determined by means of viscosity intrinsic viscosity term by means of mark howing equation this is equation number 16 so m if m is molar mass then what about k and a these are constant but these two constant would depend upon three factors these three factors are temperature nature of the solvent and nature of polymer and if you take logarithm 
of both sides of equation number 16 then it will give equation number 17 like this log of intrinsic viscosity equals to log this constant k plus constant a into log of molar mass m so equation 16 and 17 would give the graphical presentations like this if eta is plotted against m or log intrinsic viscosity is plotted against log of m so intrinsic viscosity against molar mass or log of intrinsic viscosity against molar log of molar mass these two would give these two different uh, graphical plots from this plot second plot you will get the value of from the intercept log k and the, from the slope a so that's all about this lecture the dependence of viscosity coefficient on concentration or effect of concentration on viscosity so thank you have a nice day